Hello and welcome to video number four. I'm going to start us off by looking at solving equations and then Mr. Saji will be back in the second half to look at applying solving equations. So we're going to get started here. In order to solve equations you have to understand combining like terms. So let's take a look at an example where we have to combine like terms. So when I say combining like terms, we're looking at the variables. And the variables in an equation are the letters. The numbers in the equation, 2, 3, 1, 1, and 4, are called the coefficients. So first things first, let's start with 2x. What other term has an x in it? And then there's no more x's. Let's start with the y's. And then I look at the z's, and I see that the z is all by itself. So now that I know what I can add and subtract, let's start to do so. We have two x's and a negative one x. Think back to that first video. Positive two, right, no sign. Negative x, I'm going to subtract. 2 minus 1 is 1. I have 3 y's and 4 y's. 2 positives, I'm going to add. 3 plus 4 is 7. And then uh, I look at the z's. The z is all by himself. He doesn't have anything to combine with. So we just had him at the end. Once you have three separate variables and you can no longer combine an expression, you have combined like terms. All right, let's take a look at how this can relate to solving equations. So if I have 3x minus 1 equals 29, the big difference between an expression and an equation is the equal sign. In fact, I like to put a line. I call it the wall, the equation wall. And the only rule you really have is, is we can combine like terms here, but when you do, you have to switch the sign. So if I wanted to combine like terms, I have to look at which term is common with 29. I have 3x, negative 1, and then obviously 29. So 29 is just a number with no variable. Negative 1 is a number with no variable. These are the two that get combined. So if I combine like terms with negative 1 and 29, negative 1 has to cross my equation wall. And when it does, it's no longer in this spot. It's over here, and its sign is reversed. The 3x comes down, and 29 plus 1 is 30. The last step here is we have to get x to be by itself. So I need to reverse the process of 3 times x. In order to do that, we use division. When you use division, you have to use division on both sides of our equation wall. Here, 3 divided by 3 is 1x, or just x. And 30 divided by 3 is 10. I identify my equal sign, and that is where my wall is going to go. I identify my like terms. I have 3x and negative 2x, and I have positive 7 and negative 8. I'm going to start with the x's. 3x and negative 2x. I am going to bring negative 2x over to this side of the wall. 
When I do that, it's no longer here. And it's over here, and its sign has to be reversed. Same thing over here. I have a positive 7 and a negative 8. Ideally, we want to get letters on one side, numbers on the other side. And when I move positive 7 over to be with its buddy, negative 8, it's no longer in this spot, and the sign becomes reversed. Three x plus two x is five x. Negative eight, negative seven. Think back to that first video, right? Two negatives, we add. Eight plus seven is 15. And we keep the sign. Last step here, I reverse 5 times x with division. On the left side here, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and I get x. And negative 15 divided by 5, think back to that first video, negative divided by a positive is a negative. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. And the answer is negative 3. Let's try one more example. All right, so we have a uh, longer equation here. And one of the things that you should notice right away are these parentheses right here. We have x plus 2 in parentheses. We have negative 2x minus 4 in parentheses. And then we have a coefficient before each. The first thing you should do when finding an equation that looks like this is we want to distribute, remember that from the first video? We want to distribute the coefficient over the terms. So I have 3 times 1x is going to be 3x. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 2x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10x. And 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Let's draw our line in, our equation wall. We want x's on one side, numbers on the other. So let's start here. x, x, x. Number, number, number. Well, we have two x's on this side. So why don't we combine x's to the left? So I'm going to combine this term here. I'm going to move my negative 10x over, and it has to become positive 10x. Then here I'm going to combine this, so negative 20 plus 4. And then I'm going to move this. 6 over, but the positive 6 becomes a negative 6 because it crossed that it crossed that equation wall. All right, so now let's take a look here. We have 10 plus 3 is 13. 13 minus 2 is 11x. Here I have Negative 6 and positive 4, opposite signs, so we're going to subtract. 6 minus 4 is 2, negative, because 6 is bigger. Negative 2 and, ne and negative 20. Well, same sign, so we're going to add. 20 plus 2 is 22, and the sign is going to be negative. My last step here, I'm going to reverse 11 times x, and I'm going to do so with division both sides. 11 by, divided by 11 is 1. And negative 22 divided by 11 is negative 2. Negative divided by positive is negative. 22 divided by 11 is 2. As we move on in algebra, 
these equations are going to become more complex and they're also going to become larger. It's important that we get the fundamentals down. So if you have any questions or are you happy you're having trouble with some of these equations, come see Mr. Saji or myself in office hours and we'll straighten it out for you. Thanks. Hello, this is Saji again. Today we're just going to look solving equation. Mr. Mullen already talked about one-step equation or two-step equations or multi-step equation. So now we're going to have some word problem and see how to handle that and solve it. All right. There's one question over here. If a car can travel 70 miles per hour, how long it will take to travel 590 miles? So in here, we want to get the data, which is 70 miles per, this is the key word. If you see per each every, in math it's same, per mean every hour, you can say in a different way, or each hour. It's the same thing. So, in here, it's 70 miles every single hour it travels, okay? And the total miles that car travel can travel, it's 595. If that car travel 595 miles, how many hours it will take? That is the key question. So let's see how we handle this. So if you travel in that car, the, for the first hour you're going to travel 70 miles. Alright, first hour. The second hour also you're going to travel 70 miles, which is total to, in two hours it's 40 miles, I mean 140 miles. If you travel another one more hour, which is three hours, it's going to be 210 hours. But that is not the question. In here we have how many hours they already traveled. Now we have to find how many hours it will take to travel this many miles. So we just form an equation. We know every hour we're going to travel 70 miles, but we don't know how many hours we traveled. So for that, we're just going to introduce x, which is variable or unknown. That going to be equal to 595. Now, it's a simple math. You have to solve for x. Solve for x means you just get the x by itself and get rid of everything right next to it. So in this case, 70 times x we have it. So if you want to get rid of this 70, it's multiplying, so we have to do opposite. What is opposite of multiplying? Which is division. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide. So I'm just going to put 70x divide by 70. Because it's multiplying, so we're just going to divide it so it will cancel out. Same thing if you do one side. You have to do the, on the other side of the equal sign. So we're going to do the same thing. Which is 595 divided by 70. So... 70 cancel out, which is 70 divided by 70, which is 1, 1x. One Instead of writing 1x, we're just going to write x. It's the same thing. Now, we have to divide 595 by 70. If we look at it, the number ending with 5 and this number ending with 0, so this these two numbers can divide by 5. So if you divide by 5, the top number, 1, 1, 
9. And here, if you divide it by, it's going to be 14. Now, what number can divide top and bottom? In here, two number can divide it by the bottom number, which is 2 and 7. The top number cannot be divided by 2 because the last number is odd number. So, let's try with the 7. How many 7 in 119? Can 7 goes into 1? No. Can 7 goes into 11? Yes. How many times? 1. So, what is left? 11 minus 7 is 4. 49. So how many 7 can go into 49? Again, you need to know your multiplication table, which is 7 times. So that thing is done. In here, how many 7 in here? 2 of them. So I'm just going to put 2. Now, how many 2 can go into 17? 8, because 8 times 2 is 16, 1 left. So we're just going to write it the fraction. Fraction. So now we can say it's going to be eight and a half hours, or eight point five hours. So basically, if you travel seventy miles per hour. To get 595 miles, it will take eight and a half hours. If 200 fidget spinners can be made each day, again, each per every other same, they have 1,200 spinners in the storage. So that's mean they already have 1,200 in the side on the side. How many? days until they have total of 2,000 fidget spinners. So now we have to find they already have 1,200 spinners already and they make 200 every day, every single day. If they run one day they will make 200. So we have to find how many days it will take to get 2,000. So, I'm just going to underline, this is 200 fidget can be made each day. We already have 1,200. And the total has to be what? 2,000. Again, the total means all together at the end. Alright? So, let's see how we make an equation. When we make an equation, we know we need equal sign. So at the end, how many fidgets we have to have? 2,000. I'm just going to put 2,000. But how many we already have it? 1,200. So we need some more to get 2,000. So we're going to add it. We know every single day we can make 200 but to make it 2000 how many days we need it we don't know so what we're going to do we're going to put a variable which is unknown that's what we're going to find out so like mr mullen put a wall i put a wall too so the next thing when we solve something we have to isolate by itself. Until then we have to do the math operations. So in here the first thing I want to get rid of this 1200. So what I can do this is positive 1200 because there's no sign like Mr. Mullen says. So if we have positive 1200 to bring on the other side what do we need to do? If we bring it to the other side it changes the sign. So what's going to happen? It's going to be negative 1200. So now this one cancels. So we have left with 
200x. What is 1200? I mean, sorry, 2000 minus 1200. Just do the math. It's 800. I'm just going to do it in a simple way or easy way. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. We have 2, 0 minus 2. We can't do it, so we're going to borrow 1, so it's going to be 10. 10 minus 2 is what? 8. We already borrowed 1, so it's 1 in there. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we don't need to put that. Now, we have 200x is equal to 800. In the last example, we say this is 200 times x. So if you want to get rid of this 200, if it's times, we have to do the opposite one. What is that? It's division, which is we're going to divide by 200 in this side. If we decide one side, we have to decide in here, I mean divide in here. Alright? So these 200 cancel, which is 1x, you don't need to put one on the front, we just put x. This is pretty simple. Previously we learned if we have zeros at the end, we can cancel out. So these two cancel and then these two cancel. Now, how many two goes into how many two goes into eight? Which is four. So the answer is four. So how many days it's gonna take? Four more days. Here's another example of multi-step equations. So the question is, there are three consecutive integers that have some of 42, the sum of 42, what are the integers? So there's three integers comes right next to each other, which is consecutive means, have the sums. What is sum means? In math world, they use a lot of times sum. But don't get confused with sum. Sum is equal to total. All right. So it's, it's a fancy word that they use in the math. And what are those, what are the integers? Integers, you know, they are a positive number. There's no decimal or fraction. It's a whole number. It doesn't matter negative or positive, but it has to be whole number, all right? So let's see. How are we gonna find out? We just gonna write down and guess? No, math people, we're not gonna do it. We're just gonna make a formula or equation and then we try to solve it. So in any case, if it's consecutive number, let's say the first number is x. What is the next number? So this is the number one, one, the first number. I'll put first. Second. So what is the second number? Any guess? You know, in numbers world, if you look at it, the if first number, just an example, 10, what is the next number going to be? 11, which is equal to what? 10, the first number, plus 1. So can he say the second number is x before the second number plus 1? So again, the example, if the first number is 10, the next number going to be 10 plus 1, which is equal to 11. So what is the third number? Can I say the second number plus one? Yeah, of course. S look at it. Ten, just an example. If it's ten and then it's eleven, the next number going to be eleven plus one. So I'm just going to take the second number, x plus one, plus one. So now I know all those three numbers but if I know the first number we can find out everything am I right and also if we add all these three numbers it has to be equal to 42 so now I'm gonna make a little equation first number like they said three consecutive integers 
have sum of 42. So I'm going to add all those three numbers. x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus 1. Everybody agree? If you want, you can put another parenthesis, but in this case, we don't need it. I'm just going to leave it as it is, which is equal to 42. Now we do a little cleanup. X plus. There's no multiplication, only addition, so I'm just going to write without the parentheses. X plus 1. Same thing, there's no multiplication, so I'm just going to leave the parentheses. So I write down x plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 42. If you look here, there's 1x plus another x plus another x, like Mr. Ryan did in the beginning. 1, 2, 3, so I can write 3x in here. How many ones in here, which is positive one, another positive one, and another positive one. All the signs are same, so we're just going to combine it. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, positive, so I'm just going to put positive. 3, which is equal to 42. Now, same thing that we're going to do. We're going to isolate the, isolate the x and we're going to get rid of everything. The first thing I'm going to get rid of, the 3. So, if that 3 moves on the other side, what's going to happen? It's become negative 3. We got positive 3. Now it's going to be negative 3. So what is left? 3x is equal to 42 minus 3 is 39. All right. Now, we need just x. We don't need anything else right next to it. We just need to find out what is x is. This is 3 times x, like last time I told you. Now, if it's times, if we want to get rid of, we have to divide. If we divide one side, we have to divide on the other side too. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1x, one we don't need the 1, we're just going to leave the x. So how many times 3 can go into 39? Again, if you know the multiplication table, it will be, become very easy, which is 13. So we found x is 13. Can we find the other numbers? So now we know x is equal to 13. All right. Now we don't need x. Can I put 13 over here? What is the next number? It's going to be 14. In here, instead of x, I'm going to put 13, which is equal to 15. Let's see if we did it right. So the first number is 13 plus 14 plus 15. What is it equal to? 42. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 5 is what? 12. You're just going to put 2 in there. 1 left. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So you can even check your answer. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop by in our office hours, either mine or Mr. Mullins. Okay? Thank you.